This is the fourth in a series of videos about the IGCSE Computer Science pre-release. This is for May 2018, Paper 2. So in this video we're going to look at uh, continuing with task 1 and 2 and looking at a different approach. Um, so rather than copying and pasting a lot of the code for the different computer components, we can actually use a loop to repeat that code. So. Um, I'm assuming that you've watched the previous videos if you're um, watching this one so you'll already have seen how I've gone about the task obviously this is only the way I've approached it you can um, tackle it in a number of different ways um, so if you've got to the point where the processor section is all up and running and you've tested that carefully to make sure um, the results are what you expect and it's saving things in the right place um, so if I run it now I've got uh, my options here, P3, P5, P9, if I choose a P3 it moves on to the next option, so this is what we want to do, get it that we can enter all the different components, so if I just run through my example, two ports, there we go, and at the end of my code it just prints out a little summary, I just expand this window a bit so it, it works out the total cost it prints out this customer's chosen components the prices and shows us what the stock level is now that it's subtracted one for each of those components so in this example what I've done is actually used a loop for the remaining components but the processor component is the, the only one that's a bit awkward because it has three options it's different to the rest so it's the odd one out but all the other components have two options, so RAM has 16 or 32 gig and so on. So because we've got a repeating pattern there, it means we can use a loop to repeat through um, the rest of the components once we've done the processor. So from this section onwards, in my example, is a loop. Now it looks like a lot of code, but mostly what I've done is copied and pasted the processor section once and then thought how I could make that work as a loop. So I've used a for loop because I know how many times to repeat. It's going from index 1, so remembering that a, a, an array index starts at 0, so the processor has already been done. So I'm skipping on to the next one, which is the RAM, is my starting point. And the stopping point is the length of my components list. So right up at the top of my code, the components list, you know, it can look at the length of that to see how many components there are altogether. Okay. And then rather than the, the alternative, which would be copy and pasting the processor code for all the components and renaming lots of variables, what I've done is just called it this component. And that looks at the position uh, index. So that's this, this variable here and works its way through my top list. So it just gets the name like RAM, storage and so on. <coughs> the only bit that was maybe a little bit tricky was making the the index move along correctly. I'll just show you what I mean at the top here. So if we ignore the processor in these first three positions here, I want the RAM to look at here and here. So that is index 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So when I'm looking at RAM, I want it to look at 3 and 4. When I'm looking at storage, I want 4 and 5, screen size 6 and 7 and so on. So I just, with a bit of trial and error, I found I could do a little calculation to change that variable enough to move along. Um, so what I had to do was, again, using this position variable, I multiplied it by 2 and I added 1 to get the kind of lower range and I added 3 to get the higher range. And from then on I can use these low and high variables as my indices. Now just to, if that's a bit unclear, I'll just go back a little bit and show you where I'm using it on the processor. Um, and I even used it here when it printed out the options. So you saw me running through the program. If I scroll back up, mine printed the words processor options and then it gave me exactly what was in the list at the right positions. And I did that by using this list slicing idea. So a bit like with the for loop, we have a starting value and a stopping value. So I went from index zero to index three. So I used that here and I also used it in my validation here to check 
whether the user's choice was in that mini sublist there. So I can do the same thing from then on using these low and high variables because this calculation is going to change those each time around the loop. So I can use low and high in there and they'll just be updated with the right numbers that I've calculated. Okay, and from then on, really the code is the same as it was above for the processor. So I work out the position, find the index uh, of the user's choice, which they've input, um, and then do the validation. And basically everything else here is the same as it was uh, in the previous video. Okay, so that's just another option if you want to do do it in a slightly neater way than copying and pasting. You know, not that this is complete, but I'm up to 61 lines of code. I think if you copied and pasted it, you'd be, you know, up in the hundreds of lines of code. So I hope that was helpful.